Now we're going to talk about changing the document setup. We created a document earlier today and I chose to have three pages. I chose the margin settings I wanted. I chose the bleed that I wanted. I chose all these different options that are available to us within the document creation window. However, let's say I decided that something needed to change. Maybe I didn't want the slug anymore or the bleed size I found out from my commercial printer that it needs to be a different size. All of that can be changed after the fact. If I go to the file menu on the menu bar, I can go down to document setup. In the list, choosing document setup brings up a dialog box to change the document information. Now, everything you see here is pretty much what I saw before, excluding one element, and that's the column information. And we'll look at that in a moment. But I can change the print intent from web, from print to web or mobile device. I can change the number of pages, whether they're facing or not. So for example, if I choose no facing pages and I click OK, now instead of having three pages on two spreads, I have three pages on three spreads. So this content can be adapted and changed after the fact. You're not stuck with what you set at the beginning. You don't have to start all over again. So I mentioned that I wanted to remove the slug, for example, so I can make it, make it so the slug no longer exists. I'm going to set this back to a zero value here. And once I do that, the slug will go away. So now I no longer have the slug of information. I also said I wanted to change the bleed. Changing the bleed to an eighth inch, for example, I can reduce this down to 0.125. That'll be an eighth inch bleed all around when I hit tab because of the constrained proportions, they all get the same unit of measurement. Now keep in mind that if you have content on your page already and you're making changes, for example, to the page size, maybe I'm changing it from landscape to portrait or vice versa, that content is not gonna reflow in the layout. You're going to have to go in and do some work. So that's something to keep in mind. But to start, I've now reduced the size of the bleed, I've removed the slug, and I've set it back to facing pages. So there's my facing pages on the second spread. I mentioned that there was no column information inside the document setup. That's because the column guides are part of the layout that we're looking at. The layout is on the layout menu. In the layout menu, we can see the second option from the top is margins and columns. When I click on margins and columns, I get a new dialog box. Now we can see margins and columns are here, but we also had margins and columns on the other screen. So you have two places where you can change that at this time. It used to be margins and columns was only here with the columns information. So it's new, it's recent that it's applied to that document setup page. The number of columns can be changed. And as you can see, I've added two, and now you can see in the preview here at the bottom, it has two. Now, the preview information, again, because InDesign wants to make sure, make sure that your resources are not being taxed, some dialog boxes do not have the preview checkbox selected. So if I uncheck this, you're going to see it no longer shows that preview. If I check it, it shows up. So you might want to make sure that you're looking for the preview box every time you go into these dialog boxes. Once you turn them on, it'll remember that setting moving forward. So I could increase this to three columns if I want, to have my document with three columns, and then I click OK, and there it is. Now, the thing about adding new columns when you've created a document, it didn't apply to all pages. If I want that column information to be applied to all pages, I'm going to have to select all the pages in the Pages panel. So what I'm going to do is undo that setting. I can go to Edit Undo or I can do Control or Command Z on a Mac. When I go to my Pages panel, I can select all of the pages that are here. Clicking in the Pages panel, I can use my selection tool to select all of these pages. By holding the Shift key, I can click on each of the pages and select them. Once I have all the pages selected, I can now go back to Layout, Margins and Columns, change it to two or three columns that I want like I had before. I can change the gutter spacing, maybe to reduce it or increase it. Once I click OK, you can see it's applied to page one, but now it's also applied to page two and three. 
So when working with changes like margins and columns, you'll want to make sure that you have all pages selected within your document after the fact. If you choose to set this up at the beginning, all pages that you choose to add at that time will have all those settings already. So changing the setup of the information for your document can be done once you've started your project. Just remember, any content you've added is going to need to be reflowed throughout that document.